Life is very simple, don't mess with Judge Simpson, and you will be fine. However, Mr. Vincent must not have gotten the memo. This unethical attorney learns the hard way. different violations of bond. He also has a, um, he has the no contact, he has um, the no go to that we have in this, in this case. And so I don't understand what the reason that he needed to reach out to for any reason. Mr. Rent. Well, Your Honor, uh, is the witness here? Because that is all, I mean, all the allegations are based on her words. There's been no police contact, no video, no third party witness, no DNA, no fingerprints, no police contact with my uh, defendant here. So he wants none a hearing the, on this bond violation? None of these phone numbers connect to his account. There, he absolutely denied the allegations in here. There is no physical evidence. And if there is not a witness here, Your Honor, then both the underlying case should be dismissed and this alleged I'm not property. even talking about the underlying case. So just uh, deal with what I told you to deal with. All right, well, Does he want a hearing on the bond violation? Absolutely, Your Honor. When, do you, when are you going to have the other report? Um, I'm not sure, but I can check on that today. I'm also waiting for the actual screenshots of the text messages that are written in the Romulus Police um, report. And if he's saying that that's not his phone number, I can also get a search warrant as to that effect. Now, in that police report, there are six phone numbers listed. The police report indicates that none of those numbers are uh, Mr. Carter's. If there are screenshots, I have not received those screenshots. It's the first time I'm hearing that there are two other potential police reports out there. However, this police report says that two officers showed up. I don't know how a Wayne County Sheriff's Department police report would be any different than this, as, as far as I can see, there were no Wayne County Sheriff's on the scene of this alleged incident, uh, there's just simply no physical evidence. There's no third party evidence. And frankly, if you read through the report. I did. <laughs> Before that, I revoked your client's bond. Yeah, okay, well, I, I would hope you did. When you start to read through it, the allegations in there, the, either it's a lie or he's the luckiest guy on the planet because uh, I would think that the Romulus PD would be able to get over there in the length of time that all of this stuff is alleged to have happened and find a purple Taurus. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it went, she says at 1 p.m. Uh, he, he began to call her and it somehow kicked, got into an apartment, beat on the door of the apartment, left the apartment, started yelling through the window and generated somehow all while outside six other phone calls from six different numbers, none of which line up to the defendant. If she's not here, Your Honor, then I think that that is a very, very strong indication that this is not factual. Uh, the other thing in this, Your Honor, this person alleges that he stole a gun from her in Pittsville Township. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, if that's the case, then Shouldn't this have been a, a little higher priority? I think prosecution knows that this is not accurate. Um, th there's just simply, there's nothing before the court today to indicate that he is guilty of what they're saying he's guilty of. If she's not here, she should have been here. There's no Romulus police officers here, not that they saw anything anyway. There's no third party in the police report that says witnesses, none. Wait a minute, he's broke into this apartment complex, banging on the door, goes outside, supposedly shouting the N-word. Don't you think somebody would have witnessed that, especially at 2 p.m.? Oh, no, you know, I, without a witness, without some shred of physical evidence, there's nothing. This is just the allegations of someone who did not bother, to, apparently, to show up to court, both for this, and presumably for the underlying charge. Okay. First thing, this defendant is on bond awaiting this final settlement conference where he's charged with domestic violence. He's also on bond awaiting pretrial where he's charged with child abuse court. 
He's also on bond waiting a probable cause conference where he's charged with resisting and obstructing a police officer and fleeing third degree. Mr. Vincent claims that he knew nothing about screenshots. Well, I just said on the record, I don't have them. I'm awaiting them. But they are in the Romulus police report. They say that they do have screenshots. So maybe he did read that report. Also, hey, Your Honor, I don't is, have screenshots. Me, you will not, you will not in the Rob, ever. I let you go on and on. I told you what I'm trying to focus on here. Keep trying it, Mr. Vincent. You're going to run into trouble with me real fast. Ms. Kirby, you may continue. Thank you. I also explained in my motion that the Romulus police report is different than the two other contacts that this victim had with the Sheriff's Department. I have included those police numbers. Those are also in the motion. So I'm not sure what he means on I have no idea why the Sheriff's Department and Romulus were here. No, it's completely different. And I don't have the accusations in those. Um, I'm awaiting to get those, given that they're not in our county, and I followed the process to get those. Um, also, this is if, if we're having a bond violation hearing, I would just remind the defense counsel that it's not beyond a reasonable doubt for a bond violation. So I, I would ask the court to take what it has in front of it, including the Romulus PD report, and either return so I can get the other police reports and so I can get the actual screenshots and possibly a search warrant for this. Um, and, and I would ask for the defendant's bond to be revoked and um, he, he, he to be remanded. Given the seriousness of this case and the seriousness of his other two cases, um, I do believe he's not only a threat to the victim, but to the safety of the community and also children. Um, he seems to find it funny as his defense attorney speaks, which also tells me that he does not take this, this as serious at all, which also concerns me. As for the complaining witness not being present, um, I did not know that he was going to be here. I thought he was going, he was still out since he had not turned himself in and his attorney was well aware that he had a warrant out, no bond. So she is not present. Last time I spoke to her, she was in fear for her life. She said she would continue to answer the phone, but she has been placed in a, in a, in a different place that I know of the location that she does not want me to share out loud. I have no problem sharing that with the court. Um, but she is not present and regardless if she was present or not i can still proceed based on forfeiture by wrongdoing with the interference that the defendant has committed himself through these other police reports and i was going to ask for time to get those anyway so that i could present those at trial so regardless if she is here or not and just for the record the court rule does not actually say i have to have a witness present it actually says i have to say if i can proceed or not which is what i'm doing thank you Anything else, Mr. Bench? I have hearsay, allegations, someone's not here. This all happened very in the last 48 hours, 72 no, hours. Two things is not here, but if I look at what's in here, the, first of all, <laughs> you're mixing two things because certainly they can proceed by hearsay as it regards to bond violation. So that maybe we can clear that part up because so they don't need her here for that. As to the final settlement conference, the people have stated to the court that they can proceed without her if necessary, but that they also do know where she is. I don't know how they could possibly proceed when there is not a stitch. That's not your issue. They've made the representation to the court. Okay. And I'm making a representation to the court that when you read the police report, which you have. I read it. Then you know that there is only her allegation. At least for what I have in front of me and what you have in front of you. And he is here. He's availed himself to the court every time that I've had anything to do with him. He did not really turn himself in between the time I revoked his bond and today. Just don't, just don't come out. 
because you as an officer of the court should have instructed your client to do that, that the court had revoked his bond. So I want an answer to that question. Yeah, I mean, we were going to be here today. That That is- That's not an answer to my question. Mr. Um, Allen. According to what the defendant just told his, his attorney is that um, he told him to just show up today and not turn himself in. Uh, that's correct, John. Uh, I mean, and, and that if uh, oh, put me in handcuffs, man. That's a wrong answer. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm way the wrong answer. I'm sorry, man. I'm asking. I'll you. deal with this in a minute because right now I'm furious, Mr. Vincent, that you would represent that you client defendant to remand. Thank you. Court's going to stand in recess. Please subscribe to help the channel. This is Kamu Carter. Recall. It looks like we have to control. Now, Vincent, I'm off the defendant. Yeah, there, there was absolutely a mix-up. And as much as my understanding was that he has spoken to the court and they did not tell him to come in. And I should have come in. Come in. Yeah, it was absolutely a mistake on my part. Well, it's not only a mistake, it's a sanctionable offense. And I, I think you ought to know that. To, to willfully tell the client or even to intimate to a client that they should in some way disobey a court. I, I, no way, shape, or form, Yarn, did I <laughs> meant to have that effect happen. My understanding was that he had seen you in person this week and that you come to court from. I would never, and I think you know that about me, I would never have anyone try to knowingly or disobey an order. I would never knowingly disobey any of your bond conditions or orders. He is, I mean, I had a, I don't know, Your Honor, this is a horrible mistake and, I, and I'll fall on my sword for it, but it is a misunderstanding. It's not any, it, in no way, shape or form was I trying to get him to avoid justice and he certainly is trying to avoid justice on this, Your Honor. I understand that these charges and allegations are serious. I mean, I, all I can say, Your Honor, is that my understanding was that he had spoken to the court this week and that he was free to come here Friday. We clearly had, <laughs> at no point did I ever advise Mr. Carter to do anything else other than follow the law. And it must have told him that a dozen times, something that every time I've talked to him, do not violate your bond, don't violate your bond, show up Friday. That's when we have a court date. My understanding was is that that was the understanding. And it is absolutely a snafu on my part. And I beg the court's forgiveness. He is, he has an appointment today at 2 p.m. to see Washington Community College counselor. He's trying to get his CDL so he can take care of his kids. He is working at another job. He's availed himself to court today, Your Honor. If this is bound over to jury selection, he'll be there then too. Definitely. He understands this is serious, Your Honor. He's just vehement in his innocence. and. I perhaps have been overzealous and on my part. I meant no disrespect to you, court, to the people. What I'm going to do in this case, um, because I mean, something's got to be decided as to what was told this defendant. That may it be resolved some other way, but the court will take whatever action it deems necessary, and I won't do that until. June 26, if I deem it appropriate to do so, because as, as angry as I am right now, I'm not going to make that decision on that. Um, I will set a bond hearing in person in this case for June 26, 2023 at 9 a.m. All of the paperwork will be in, sent over, and we can deal with it at that point. In the interim, defendant's bond is revoked. I will adjourn the jury final settlement conference that we were going to have today, as well as the jury selection. Jury final settlement will be August, my next one, August 11th, 2023 at 9 a.m. Jury selection, August 14th, 2023 at 8.30. And then to hand. Yeah, my echo. I don't think you want to do that right now. 
I'm, I'm, I am, I am just. Your Honor, you know I did not. <laughs> Are we going to argue these other motions first, or are we going to? Where are we with these 404Bs? Um, I believe Mr. Fikowski still wants to proceed on them, and I'm prepared to argue them as well. All right. Um, guys, give me a few minutes and then I'll come back and I'll. Wow. Judge Simpson is just awesome. This has been brought to you by Time Served. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Bye bye for now.